Hi, this is Jack Downs with another After Effects tutorial. Some couple different techniques thrown in here. A little movie trick with a different way to use a mask. Um, some more work with keyframes, reversing keyframes, duplicating keyframes, um, using a solid as a background for text, a variety of things. Um, so uh, I have uh, made my new project and I brought in the piece of uh, video that you can download from Moodle and you should look at your instructions for that. I'm gonna make a new composition with it. And then the first thing we should do is we should view this video. And you'll see as I play it here, there's a little sound, it's outdoors, you recognize the scene. Nothing seems to be happening. I hear some footsteps, but eventually, eventually, someone will walk in the picture. Hey, it's me. And then strangely walk behind the post, but then stop, come back, look out, strangely, and then walk away. Okay, what the heck's going on? Back to the beginning. The idea is we want to create a mask around here, which is going to look at like make it look like I walk behind the pole, I disappear. Then I peek back out again and then disappear again for good. So this is going to use the technique of a freeze frame, making a still out of video. So I'm going to select my video. And it's the only layer I have right now. And Control D for duplicate. And I'm going to name my duplicate. I'm going to name it freeze. It's going to be the freeze frame. I'm going to make it a freeze frame. I'm going to make it a freeze frame at the moment it is right here where nothing else is on the screen. I'm not on the screen. Select it again. Right click time freeze frame. It doesn't seem like much has happened, but now the image that we're looking at is actually a still image. Okay, good. So now I'm going to create a a mask right here and around the edge, which will add in only the area where it's as if nothing's on this side of the pole. Um, so I can zoom in a little bit. I could use um, this pull down here, which is now in, at fit, and zoom in to 100% or something. I could use my space bar for my hand tool and move up to here and grab my pen. Why not? Here we go with the pen and click outside and click down onto that edge right there. And then this is a nice surface for making a, making a uh, path. Use my sp space bar, click down here, space bar, here. You get the idea. Here, here, then outside. No reason to be picky about this. Actually, I did not want to do that, though. I'll click over here, just in case I happen to walk through the area. I don't want to see my foot up here, suddenly. And finish it up. OK, let's go ahead and zoom back out to fit the whole thing. I'm going to change to my regular selection tool, so don't click around with my pen tool. Click off, minimize that, I guess. And let's preview it. There we go. Very beginning. Uh, nothing's happening again still, but eventually, again, I'm going to walk into the frame. Ah, I disappeared. And we'll look back out and disappear for good. Okay, so much for that. Now, why do I have all this time at the beginning here? Well, I want to create a, uh, a title and show you the idea of browsing more titles and so on, too. So um, I want to make a solid semi-transparent layer to put the title on because this is lots of video. Sometimes it's a hard thing to see titles on properly. Make it feel more like a real title. And I'm going to then I'm going to use it a technique to go look at a whole bunch of titles and animations that could be used um, instead of using the, the uh, all those special titles and so on in uh, Premiere to kind of make your own. And which are many, many choices here in After Effects to, to do with. So I'm I have these minimized and I've clicked off. I'm going to do a right click new solid and I'll call it text background. Text back, something like that. And I'm gonna make it I'm black. If you want to do a dark colored text, you should make yours white. You'll see that why in just a minute. But either is fine. Black or white is probably your choices. Yeah, you could use that color, I suppose, but whatever. I think probably black or white. 
I'm going to say, okay, a new layer, and it takes over everything. What's going on? Well, um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm not zoom in, but sorry, make this guy smaller. Imagining I want to see some unaffected video around it, but I want to have plenty of room for some big text in here. So somewhere in that range here. Okay. But at the beginning, where we are right here, I want this to be invisible. I want it to appear, then the text will appear, the special effect on it, and so on. Okay, so that's going to be animation. So let's animate our solid transform. It's going to be opacity, right? Cursor is at the beginning. No, it's not. Let's bring the cursor to the beginning. Okay. Opacity. And let's bring it all the way down to zero. So I got a keyframe for zero opacity. I want there to be no opacity for about a second, let's say. That means I want this to be the standing state. I don't want to start changing from the beginning to something. I want to wait and then start changing here. Okay, well then I'm going to copy this keyframe. It is selected already. If I'm not sure, I can always click off and click it to make sure it's selected, which is it's just the this status right here where it's disappeared. Copy it. Move my cursor. I always move my scrubber again. I like to move my scrubber just before I do a paste. Sometimes otherwise the paste doesn't work right. Move it to about one second. Paste, control V. So now it is disappeared. It stays disappeared, but only here is it going to start to change. It's going to start to change over a second to come up to some other opacity. And I'm going to zoom up to about eh, 40, 50 percent, something like that. I want to have a background for text, but I still want to see the video behind it. Okay, good. And now, someplace around here, I'm going to put my cursor at about another second along. So at three seconds is where I'm going to want my text to appear. But the thing is, we're going to type the text, and it's going to appear as its layer. But when we're going to apply an effect, which makes it only appear at a certain point. Okay. So, text. So we can close this guy up. We'll come back. We'll have to do this, deal with this opacity again later, but for now we can minimize that. And we can select off. Text is, of course, a text tool, and we're going to click in here. Um, I It's not fair because I actually have already set some things up because I did this before. You probably usually start like at 72 point. I'm not sure what you're going to have for fill and stroke. You can play with these yourself. Um, and what are you going to have for font? I'm just going to click in here and start typing. I want you to, whatever you do, I want you to type something like, well, I want you to type these three lines in all caps, the disappearing man. Okay. But we want that to be a lot bigger. This font I think is okay. It's copper plate. I think it should be something bold or boldish anyway. This is copper plate bold. I think a big blocky font would work best. Whatever that heiress is many others you could pick from um maybe franklin gothic heavy that would be good um pick whatever you like i'll try that and then you want to make it really big like it takes up most of this screen area here and then you may click off and take a look at it and see what you think you could change the centering or move it around or whatever for me i think that's okay um you can put an outline on it you change the color. And of course, if you have a dark text, you probably would have a whitish background behind there, still with opacity on it, though. Okay, but the problem is, right now, that text is there the whole time. See, cap locks are on. It's telling me that. It doesn't like cap locks. Okay, um, so that we don't want that text to just be there the whole time. We want it to just start to appear here, about three seconds. We'll get to that in a minute. We want, want to take a look at some presets. Um, effects and presets. So we'll click on this. Now, when I clicked on it, it just appeared. When you click on it, it's going to probably like take forever. Right? So be patient and wait. Okay. The other thing is that eventually it'll come up in form. All right. And then you're going to go to animation presets and look at the text area. And you'll see there's all these text choices here. Blurs, curves, expressions, fill, strokes, graphical, light, so on. There's so many, and many of them have dozens of subsets within them. I had all these open, I guess. Wow, that's weird. Okay, but um, animation presets, text, and we have to look at all these. How can we tell what they do? 
Do we have to like apply every one, one after another? That would take forever. Instead, why don't we go to this hamburger menu here? That's what I call these guys anyway. Click on it and choose browse presets. Now again, you have to be very patient here. This is going to take quite a while. It's going to open another program. It's going to open Adobe Bridge. Um, and when it does, then you're still going to have to be patient. If mine actually just opened up, yours may take longer. Because you're still going to have to wait because Adobe Bridge is up, but what you asked it to do is not here yet. So you're going to wait, you're going to wait. Eventually, in this central content area, you're going to have a bunch of folders. I'm going to pause while this is taking, but be patient. Don't do anything yet. Okay, finally mine came up, and yours probably looks something similar to this. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, this is a different program. It's come in sitting partially on top of this. I could make it bigger. Sure, why not? I could make it full screen. Um, I could change the amount of area for these things. But remember, now, this is the animation presets. I want text again. So I'm going to double-click on text. And I'm going to get all these choices. These are the choices from that menu. And within each one, I can open it up. And I can see a little mini of the thing with the description. But better yet, excuse me, better yet, um, if I click on one, in my preview window, I get a preview of it. And it's going to run. It's going to show me what would happen. And it's a little small, but you get the idea. And then I could try another one. Oh, I want to try this one. It's going to give me a preview of that one, what it does. Not sure I didn't like that one. I'm going to go back to text, and I'm going to choose the scale ones. There's not that many of them. How about this one here? Zoom forward is what it's going to do. How about zoom away? And I go back to text. Keep on going and looking. I'm going to go into blurs. So I would think you should pause this video now, take some time, and look through a bunch of these. You see there's so many choices. I do have one I want you to use for this, though. It's in blurs, and it's going to be transporter. There you go. See, it transports in like that. I, I really like that. So that's the one we're going to use. Um, so again, you could stop here, pause here, spend more time, look at them. This is how you can see a bunch of them anyway. So I'm going to get rid of this program for now. Okay, so what am I going to do? Um, I'm going to apply from inside text blurs transporter. Now, how can I apply this? I could. Uh, I think the easiest thing to do is just go drop it on the text itself. My cursor is at the three-second mark, and as a result, it will happen at the three-second mark, which is nice. Um, so what's going on here? Well, at three seconds in, it's going to zoom like that. Good. Okay, that's fine. But what's really going on there? Let's select this. I'm selecting the text layer. I'm going to hit U to show keyframes. And I, it's really only got two keyframes. A lot of stuff is happening in those two keyframes, though. Um, so one thing I noticed is the keyframes, by the way, if I wanted to move this, if I didn't have it at three seconds, I could select these two keyframes and just physically drag them where I want them. Let's say I just want it a little bit further this way or a little bit further that way. Whatever, you do that. I also noticed, though, I think that they're a little far apart. I want it to go a little faster. So I could just click this second keyframe and move it in closer. Now it's going to go faster. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, we should probably preview this whole thing, right? Back to the beginning. Play. And then the text is going to come in. That goes in and boom. Okay, good. Now the, the point is I want this to kind of untransport here. But that's not part of the effect to make it reverse itself. How can we do that? We'll get to that in just a moment. Okay. So, a little interruption there. Just to re review, we've uh, added the text. We've created this transporter effect. Uh, moved it, closed it up a little bit, make it a little faster. Okay. At some point down the road here, we know that I'm going to walk onto the screen right about there, right? Okay, good. However, um, just before I do, I'd like, maybe around here, the... Um, this uh, this trans this uh text to um have transported out again, and then after that this screen to go away. 
how we make the tra text transport out again. That wasn't one of the effects choices. So this is how we'll do it. We're going to select all the select both those keyframes and copy them, and then move the cursor down to where we want it to happen. Let's say about seven seconds or so, and then paste. All right, good. But that would just be a repeated transporter effect. With them still selected or select them again, whatever. Do a right click on the key, any either of those keyframes. Choose keyframe assistant time reverse keyframes. So it reverses what they do. So the time reverse keyframe actually is used in lots of ways to make one effect. You can then you can duplicate an effect just by copying and pasting the keyframes, or copy and paste the keyframes and, re and reverse them. So now what's going to happen is that it'll transport in and then it'll transport out. All right, and then before I walk on the screen about there, we want the whole the, the screen to disappear. We'll change the opacity, right? So let's go back and look at where we were with the opacity there. Here is the keyframe that says stay at this 50% opacity, right? I'm going to copy that and I'm going to move my cursor to about there, about nine seconds or so, and I'm going to paste it. So at this point, it is still at 50%. But between there and the next second, at 10 seconds, I want it to go down to zero. So I'm going to make it go all the way down to zero. And I think we are about done now. Let's play the whole thing through. I'll minimize these guys up. Click off. Back to beginning. And here we go. Okay. So the screen is going to come on. Our text is going to transport in. Um, it's moving a little slower than normal, I think, right now. Um, in fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna back it up and start over again. Try it again. That's more normal speed. Sometimes I notice the previews goes a little slow and it's having trouble processing. And then the text goes away, and then the screen goes away, and I walk into the screen, and there I go. It's slowing down right now because it's having a little trouble doing the preview. And then I'm going to poke my head back out again. Sooner or later here, my preview is getting very slow right now. My computer is having some trouble and come back out again. And then that is the end. We could close up our work uh, area to about 20 seconds. I think we'll be fine. In fact, I'm going to do that right now. Grab my work area, close it to 20 seconds. Okay, save your work as you go. I wasn't doing a very good job saving. That may have been part of the problem I was having also. Um, and um, you will be all set. You go ahead and um, this time use the um, uh, media render queue file export add to media encoder queue and then go to the next step and um, again you have to wait for a while until it comes up and then wait even longer until you see your um, video show up. And then you can change the name and location of it. Um, I'm just going to pause while all this stuff comes up. Well, that took a very long time. First, it took a long time for the program itself to come up. And then this area was probably blank. I have one extra thing in here which I have to get rid of. Don't worry about that. Then finally, after a long wait, you see the little AE and your current project will come up here. Um, yes, H264 is correct. Oh, that's fine. And then this is the name and location. So click on it if you want to change the location. My location is fine. I'm going to put my name. I'm going to say Jack. Final. Whatever. And then I will say uh, save. And then I find a little green button and click on it. And it will. I will see the little preview happening here. It will take a while. And it will eventually go through. Um, and then go ahead and put up a Moodle.